The atmospheric science department is a world-class discipline department in atmospheric science. I think it's probably the best in the United States and the world. And uh, the university also has a world-class group in ecology, the Natural Resource Ecology Lab. And we also have a long-term ecological research station that's housed here in the College of Natural Resources. And this is a group that focuses on looking on the short grass steppe and how this landscape is threatened and how it changes and how it's affected by um, in the environment. These are world-class groups and together I think it's an opportunity for a student or for scientists to uh, collaborate on interdisciplinary research because they're world-class discipline programs and that mean, and they're co-located here at CSU and, we, and that's a unique opportunity to provide some very original research. One of the things we're excited about is we have, um, there's been general recognition that carbon dioxide has an effect on the climate system. But what we're finding is that there are other human effects on the climate system that are probably at least as large and maybe of greater importance. And one of them is land use change. When you change the landscape, say a forest to an agricultural area, you change the amount of energy that's absorbed at the surface. And that feeds into the atmosphere and affects rainfall and clouds. And since clouds move, you can change things horizontally. So you can change things hundreds or thousands of kilometers away. And so we find that land use change um, has a global consequence that is significant. And we're doing a lot of research to quantify that. How important is it? What landscapes are particularly important in terms of the climate system? We're also looking at the effect of aerosols and how they affect like rainfall and cloud processes. And that also connects globally and has a global implication. So we are looking at climate in a much more broad perspective than uh, has been looked at in the past. I have colleagues all around the world that work on these, you know, India, Japan, Europe, uh, Africa. Uh, so it's a very far-ranging community that works on these problems. And, and as I say, one of the problems is, for example, if you deforest Southeast Asia, and a lot of that's already been deforested, but if you continue to deforest it, what our research says is you change where thunderstorms occur in the tropics, and that changes how the energy is exported to, do, at higher, to higher latitudes. And that can affect how the jet stream behaves at high latitudes, which can affect, for example, winter weather patterns in the western United States. So we're finding that everything is interconnected. And um, our research has shown that the land use change itself is one way you can change how this interconnection occurs. And that raises questions about the human disturbance of the climate system. Mm -hmm. I'm also a state climatologist for Colorado. And one of the things that we've been focusing on in the last few years is the drought in, in the western United States. And we have done studies that have shown, for example, that the um, greater population and demand for water in the West has made us more vulnerable to drought today than we would have been if we had the same uh, 1930s reoccur, for example, which is a very concerning issue. But that also means you have to develop collaborations with the social scientists and the policy scientists. And most of my group works with an atmospheric model uh, called the Regional Atmospheric Modeling System. We also have it coupled to a land surface model that's developed by Mike Koganauer here at CSU and also a model developed by Dennis Ojima and Bill Pardon and colleagues at Natural Resource Ecology Lab. And what we've done is taken an atmospheric model and this, these land surface models and coupled them together in order to look at how the land and the atmosphere interact between the two areas. And that's been very um, successful. We've had some very original research that's been done with, in that framework. But this also requires that the graduate student reach out beyond atmospheric science to learn something about ecology, for example, or about hydrology. And so I encourage the students in atmospheric science to take courses outside of our program and students in graduate degree program in ecology to take courses in atmospheric science so they can cross disciplines. So one of my major emphasis is interdisciplinary research and academic training because I think that's really the future of, of earth science and of climate science. It's crossing discipline boundaries. I have never had any of my students have any problems finding positions and I think part of the reason is they're very good but secondly they have um, interdisciplinary skills and, that that, and they're looking for people like that. So having this ability to be fluent in ecology, hydrology and atmospheric science makes them much more employable than if they were just in one of the other disciplines by themselves. I encourage them to go to research conferences because that provides them a direct communication of our research to the wider community, but also exposes them to future employers, to future colleagues. And um, so I'm trying to build the student up so that they can have an opportunity to, to, to as quickly as possible to get into the wider community and be known.